Hello everyone, and I've been trying to relearn Unreal. Like I had, I knew a little bit of it, and then I have, didn't use it for like a couple of years, so I've forgotten everything. <laughs> so I've sort of come back now uh, and trying to relearn Unreal. This is Unreal 5.1. I haven't gotten 5.2 as yet, uh, but what I was trying to do was like use Lumen to just light up a very basic scene. So I have this classroom scene, uh, which I had downloaded from somewhere a long time back. Uh, you can use any free classroom scene or anything that you want. Okay. The idea is to light this whole thing and then uh, set up like a basic animation. So if I look at it through my camera, see, so I have like a basic animation with like pretty shallow depth of field. Okay, so uh, what I wanted was like do the full animation and lighting and then also set up the render and see how to get like good quality depth of field out of this. And I also wanted to set up like the full uh, ACES workflow. Okay, so we'll also take a look at how to uh, set up an ACES configuration and use that in our final render. And then also import it into After Effects and do an ACES setup over there as well. I use After Effects, if you if you use DaVinci, the setup for that will be different, but there are enough videos for it. Okay, so you can like, you know, look that up. Okay, so uh, this is what I have. Okay, so to get started, what I'll do is, I'm gonna create a new level. Okay, so I'll just create a new level, I'll call it uh, test. Okay, and I'll double click on it and save it. Okay, so I have this. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do something because I'm, pretty new with Unreal. I haven't figured out if there's a way to create like an empty object. Okay, so I'm just going to create a cube. And I'll place it at zero so that I know where zero is. Okay, and uh, I'll just set this viewport to wireframe temporarily. And then I'm going to drop in the classroom that I have. Okay, so I'm just going to take all the stuff and just drag and drop it and place this at zero as well. And I'm gonna parent it to that cube. Okay, so I'll just like, let's rename this to parent. And I'm gonna take like everything and just drop it on, on that. Okay, so what I can do is now I can like move it around using this guy. Okay, if there is a way to create an empty object, let me know in the comment section because I would really like it if there was just a dummy object. Okay, and I'm gonna make it small because it's actually a pretty big scene. Okay, so I'm just going to make it like 0.5 or let's make it like point. Yeah, 0.5 should be fine. Okay, so this is okay. You know, we have our basic scene. Now uh, we want to set up the basic lighting for this. So you want to do a few things. Uh, you can do it after as well, but you want to do a couple of things before you start off. Like if you come into edit and you come to project settings and you want to turn, uh, type in lumen. So there are a few things that you want to turn on, which is uh, turn on high quality translucency reflections and also turn on uh, use hardware ray tracing when available. Okay, I'll show you what difference this makes later on, but make sure you turn this on, okay. So that will help like because we're going to do some basic material work. So uh, having this on gives you better results with like metal and stuff. Okay. Okay. So this is good. Now uh, let's just set up the basic lighting that we want. So I'm going to come in here and uh, come to window and turn on the environment light mixer. Okay. Like usually it's a floating window. Like usually it'll show up, you know, something like this. You can just drag and drop it where you want it. Okay. I'll set it up to uh, normal and just click on all of these buttons. Okay, and it'll make the lighting for you. Okay, so just say create skylight, create atmosphere light, sky atmosphere, uh, volumetric clouds, height fog. Okay, so just make all of it. And if I change this over to lit, uh, you should start seeing your scene. Okay. So what we want to do is take the skylight and Make sure it's on movable. I'll get it up to two. And I want to take the directional light, press E, like rotate it till, yeah, we get light coming in over here like that. Okay. See. Okay. 
Okay, now the lighting, the material is the problem, which is why it's getting, it's looking so dark. So we're going to create a new material. Okay, so I'm going to right click here. I'll create a new folder. We'll call it materials. And I'll create a new material. We'll call it a basic material. And we'll just set up like the most rudimentary because I'm not going to texture this or anything. So I just want like a color and a metallic specular and roughness like that's it. So keep three pressed. It will create a vector. Okay. Or it will create a color. I'll set this to like a white and plug that in and then keep one pressed and click three times. And so this will be metal. Okay. This one will be specular. I'll keep it to one. And this one will be roughness. I'll keep it to 0.5. And then just right click and convert these into parameters. So I'll just call this color and this will be metal. This will be specular and this will be roughness. So yeah, and then just save it. And now create a, I'll just save this and now create a material instance. We'll call it uh, white material and I'll pick everything. I'll pick up my whole scene. Like I'll just take like all of this and come down here to the material slot and just drop in this guy and you'll immediately see everything light up. There you go. Okay. Because the basic material that it creates like that grid material that it creates, it's too dark. So you can't really, you know, see much. Okay. So this is fine. But now uh, before we continue, let's also set up the uh, the ACES configuration. So what you want to do is like I have this which I've created, but we'll create a new one. Yeah. So right click here, come to miscellaneous and you will find the open color IO configuration. Okay. So we'll call this open color IO config two and double click on this. And you want to firstly load up your uh, ACES configuration. So I'm assuming that you have downloaded it. Now, if you haven't downloaded it, you can just come to, uh, if you come to Google and just search for like download ACES GitHub, you will find the first link. So you can just download it. Okay. And then uh, keep all of it in a folder. And what you'll need is you'll need like the config file. So what you want to do is click on these three dots and scroll or like, you know, browse to wherever your ACES configuration is. Yeah, so I have it here. So I can just come to ACES 1.2 and I'll pick up the config.ocio. So that's what you want. And then you want to do two things. You want the color spaces and then you want the display. Okay, so the color spaces is what space you're converting from and to. Okay, so the default color space for Unreal is a linear sRGB. And then we want to convert it to ACES CG. Okay, so you click here on the plus and then you click there and you come to utility and you will find linear sRGB. And then we want a second one, which will be the ACES CG. So those are the two that we want. And then this is for display. Now don't add too many. The more you add, the more data it has to bring in, the slower it will get. So generally you just want to work with sRGB and that should be fine. Okay. So we can just get sRGB, but if you want, we can get in maybe like rec 709. Okay. So you can do those two and then just save this. Now, once you've saved this, if you come into uh, lit and OCIO, then you'll see like you can pick which one you want. So I'll pick up the second one and uh, set this to ACES CG and set this to ACES sRGB and there you go. So you can see the viewport change. So now you are working in proper ACES space. Like if I turn this off, you'll see like, you know, this is standard. This is with ACES. This is not important, but if you're working with ACES, then, you know, this is how you set it up. Okay. Now, once I've done this, the next thing I want to do is I want to sort of light this up a little better. Now, usually what I like to do is, uh, I put lights on my windows. Okay. Like I don't want to depend on this alone. Okay. So what you want is let's just, uh, right click here 
Okay, so come into your actor panel. Now, if you don't have the actor panel, what you want to do is click here and you can say place actor panel. Okay, so that will place the actor panel. But you can also make from here, but sometimes you can't find, then you have like a search bar over here so you can search for things. So I can just take this and I'm going to create a rectangle light. And let's just zoom out, come outside and just bring it out there. Let's just see if I can set this to wireframe. Yeah, so just, you know. Yeah, and then, uh, wait a second, where are you? Let's rename this to window light and yeah, bring this out, rotate it. Press E for rotation. If you want, you can turn on the snapping and I'll just turn it to like 90 degrees. So I'll just snap it to 90. And then I want to scale it up so it's the size of the window. Okay, so let's set, set this back to lit and just make it big enough so it's the size of your window. Yeah, I think that is good. Perfect. If you want temporarily, we can just turn off all of our other lights. Okay, so I can just take this. I'll turn off the directional light. Yeah, so we just have this. We can also turn off the skylight so everything is dark. Okay, now you also what you also want to do is uh, if you come into wireframe, make sure the attenuation is big enough that it covers the whole scene. So just take this and drag it out to about 6000. That should be big enough. Uh, no, slightly bigger. Yeah, I think about 8000 should be good. Yeah. Okay, so once you've done this, keep Alt pressed and just drag it, that will duplicate it for you. Okay, so we want four of these. And then I can create a new folder here, we'll call it lights. I can just drop all of these in there. So if I go back to lit, what you'll see is this will help me kind of light up the whole thing a lot better. I'll have more control rather than just being limited to or just being dependent on the skylight. What you also want to do is come into ray trace and turn on ray tracing. Usually my, my scene has ray tracing on but just keep it on enabled anyways. I'll get the samples up to six. Uh, I have a 30 Ti so it's a decent enough card or a pretty good card. This all depends on how good your card is. If your card is a little slow, it's going to slow down. Okay. Anyway, so now the next thing is I want to take the intensity up to about 100 and see. So now the advantage is that you have a pretty well lit interior without having to depend purely on, you know, the sunlight. Now I can turn on the sunlight again. So I'll turn on the directional light and I'll turn on the skylight. And there you go. So now we have like, you know, a good looking scene. Okay, now I want to do a couple of things just from a stylized, uh, like a stylistic point of view. So I'm going to come into my directional light and turn on temperature and make it warm to about like 3500. Yeah. Okay, see, so it's like nice and warm, maybe 4500. And then take all of these lights and make them slightly colder. So I can make this maybe 9000. Yeah. If you want, you can make it brighter still, like we can get to 200, but I think 150 should be good enough. And the nice thing is you can also change the scene to part tracing and it'll work perfectly fine. Okay, so I can just take this and I can change this to part tracing and there you go. Okay, actually part tracing will make it slightly brighter, but uh, yeah, so if you, if you switch it to part tracing, like lower all the light intensities. Okay, anyway, so we'll keep it lit for now. So this is good. Okay, so now that this is done, uh, we want to start improving a few things. So you need to bring in the uh, post-process volume. Okay, because that has controls for lumen and everything. So just type in post-process and we can drop this in. I'll place it on zero. So the first thing we want to do is it usually affects within the bounding box of it. So we want to like, you know, we want it to affect everything. So just type in bound, you'll get something called infinite extent and turn that on. Then type in lumen and you just want to turn on like global illumination method will be lumen. You can, if you turn it off, it does this, which is not what we want. So turn on lumen and then turn on all of these parameters over here. So we want the quality at two. We want the scene detail at four, like just crank up all the values. And we want final gather quality at two. 
okay so this will give you like you know more detail and uh, trace distance is fine we don't need to worry about that and then we can just type in like temperature and we can kind of adjust these things so i'll make it you know like slightly warmer and slightly greenish yeah and maybe a couple of things like i can try to give it some vignetting if i want and let's type in saturation and let's try to kind of bump this up a little okay so this is fine okay now that our basic lighting is done let's uh, make a few more materials okay so i'll just take this i'll create a couple of material instances let's call this chair material and we want metal and we want uh, something for the floor and let's make one for the blackboard yeah okay so i'll just take the metal and with this is fine i'll just keep this to one keep the metal value to one make the 0.2 let's save this and i can drop it on the chair there you go then i'll take the chair material let's make this uh, like pink but and you can see like now it shows you like the srgb preview which you'll see the change here like this is with the preview and without the preview and we'll also get the roughness down to 0 0.2 and save this and i can drop it on that see and the great thing is it also shows you shows you like the light bounce so that is pretty cool okay. uh, i think i can lower the saturation here yeah let's get this back to one okay so this is good uh, then let's make something for the floor so i'll just drop that in there let's see what we can do with this so let's make it 0 0.1 yeah and let's change the color to something okay i think this should be fine and i want to create something for the blackboard so this should just be dark Okay, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so the lighting actually is like, is pretty simple. Like if you come in here to the directional light and just, you know, like spin it around, you'll see it works pretty well. Okay, what we can also do with the directional light is uh, if you want it slightly softer, you can increase the source angle. And this is also ray trace, so we can, take the ray tracing samples to around six okay so that will give me like you know slightly better ray tracing angles and we can turn on enable for this as well okay so this is this is good so you can kind of move it around and you know see what kind of lighting you want okay. and we can take the skylight like if we, if we want to do this like i can take this and maybe make it like 10 or Okay, now this is not really working because you want to turn on like real time capture as well. Yeah, see, so real time capture does a better job. Okay. okay, so this is fine. Uh, let's do one. Let's do a couple of final things. I'll add like a like a bloom to this. So let's type in bloom, and we can add some bloom to this. Okay, so I can just like crank up the intensity maybe lower the threshold to like to define which areas will you know will shine yeah see so that's not bad you can also try to control like the bloom tint but yeah that's not important at the moment Oh, nice. You're getting like these nice little light shafts coming in there because of the bloom. Yeah, let's keep those. Those look nice. Let's up the intensity of this. So it's like, yeah, really bright. Oh, this is nice. Okay, I like this. And we'll keep the skylight back to two. Okay. 
Okay, so once you've done this, let's add a camera here. So we'll set up a sequencer and then we'll set the camera in there. So I'll just come up here to display and we can say add level sequence and we'll call it uh, class animation. And we'll just click here, it will create a new camera for us. And it will also allow me to sort of pilot it, so which is good. Okay, so I can just sort of zoom out a bit here. Uh, the scene is like the classroom is a little small, so we might have to adjust a little bit. So come into the current focal length and make it about 20. So it kind of, you know, allows you to zoom a bit. And uh, I want relatively shallow depth of field. So what I'm going to do is come into the lens settings and get the minimum f-stop to 0 0.01, which is a ridiculous number, but <laughs> that will allow me to, like otherwise the current aperture won't go down. Okay, so make this 0 0.2 and you'll suddenly see, you know, the depth of field kicking in. And then come into focus settings and you can pick something. So if I pick, let's say, you know, this guy, okay, or let's say we pick here, see, there you go. Okay, so now we have like, you know, fairly shallow depth of field. Okay. So I can bring it down like, you know, really low. So let's say if I click there, yeah, see, so now we have like, you know, shallow depth of field. Okay, let's just make one minor change here. I want to make it around, I think 25 should be fine. Yeah. Okay, so I want to set up a basic animation. So I want to animate the light and I want to animate the camera. So I'm just going to take the direction light and drop it in there. Okay, and then add like a transform to it. And we'll set up a keyframe and let's do one thing. Let's just keep it like there. I'll just keyframe this and then come to around 105 or 100. Okay. And let's just move it around like that. And then keyframe it again. Okay. Like that little button over there, add new keyframe. Okay. So this should give you, say, okay. like maybe like, let's keep it this way. Let's bring this in like that. Yeah, like if we play this. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, so let's do one thing. Maybe I should like lower the light shafts a little. So I'll come into my directional light. I'll type in bloom and I can just get this down to 0 0.2. I think, yeah, that should be good enough. Okay, like we don't want it too much. Yeah, and just to show you like if I, uh, like let's bring the depth of field back to like about two, okay. And just to show you the difference that you get with uh, hardware ray tracing, okay. So if you come into your uh, project settings and we type in Lumen, And just to show you that, like if you turn off, use hardware ray tracing, see, this is what happens. Okay. Like, and if you turn it on, it kind of like the reflections work a lot better. Like almost everything works a lot better. So when you have this option, like, I think this will work with like any kind of a card, but I think an RTX card is better. So yeah, if you have that, like, make sure you turn this on. Okay. Like it'll make a lot of difference. Okay. Okay, so this is good. Let's maybe we'll just animate the camera. Okay, so I'll just come in here. Uh, you know, click on transform. And then come to maybe like this point And just, you know, maybe rotate a bit and zoom out. And click again. So, and then at this point, I just want to zoom out a bit like that. So I'll get like a decent, it looks terrible, but yeah, okay, fine. You know, like this is okay. okay. Yeah. So not the best of animations, but it's good enough for, you know, what we want to do right now. Okay. And then we'll bring back the depth of field to 0 0.2 and let's click here. And what we'll do is you have the option to animate the manual focus distance. Okay. Uh, let's just, let's do one thing. Let's just keep this a little low like this. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll start off with 
the focus being here and I'll key this and then we'll come out there and I will take the focus picker and we'll pick uh, yeah let's pick that guy and we'll key this again so what we should get is you know like we'll be out of focus in the beginning and then it will focus in over here maybe lower the angle a little like that yeah I think this is good okay okay so next what we'll do is we will set up the final render all right so our basic animation is done okay, so let's just set up the movie render queue for our final render okay so come into windows cinematic and movie render queue and let me just get rid of this okay so i'll click on the plus and we'll pick up the animation that we want or the level sequence that you want so we want class animation and in the settings since i had already made like a preset it's kind of loaded that okay so i'll just click on that and i'll show you what needs to be done okay so I'll render this at 128720. Okay. And uh, that's in the output, like where you can define. And we'll also give it a name. So let's call it class animation. Okay, then you have like a whole bunch of stuff you can add from here. So we want an EXR output. The default is kept to JPEG. So we can pick up uh, an EXR output, which I've already added. Okay, so if I delete that, then you can just come in here and you can see like we have EXR output. The next thing you want is uh, you want the anti-aliasing and uh, you have temporal counts and spatial counts. Usually you just keep a high level of temporal counts. Okay, so these two values get multiplied. Okay, so if this is one, you know, the spatial count is one and this is 12, you'll get only 12 samples. But if this is two, then this will be 12 into two. So you'll get 24 samples. Okay, so I'll keep, let's say I'll keep this to 16 and spatial count because we're mostly just like it's a moving scene so we'll keep temporal temporal counts the next thing you want is make sure that the anti-aliasing method is kept to none uh, i don't know why but it always sort of says that and then uh, there is a document on uh, on the unreal engine which kind of says like keep the warm-up frame counts to like 120 uh, I didn't really keep it that high, I kept it to four. That's basically like it calculates previous frames so that uh, the animation knows or the lighting and the bloom quality and everything sort of knows like, you know, what should be the start point. So I'll keep this, let's say I'll keep this to around uh, 20 and 20, okay. Uh, now comes the most important part, which is your color output. Okay, so I'll delete this and I'll set up a new one. So I'll click here and I'll put in color output and what you want is if you want to turn on the OCIO configuration so that will automatically disable the tone curve which is good so what we want is click here and we want to pick up the configuration and then you want to define like which color space is the incoming uh, which is the incoming color space and which is the outgoing so the incoming color space is utility linear and the outgoing color space will be ASUS CG like that's it so if you do this it will be fine Okay, so the last thing that we want is uh, something called console variables. So console variables are sort of like command line uh, uh, commands that you have, which you can use to improve the quality of your render. So if you search for, you know, how to use movie render queue, uh, you'll get a document. And in that, it gives you like all of these various console variables that you can use. So what we want is, I primarily want like depth of field quality and we can use bloom quality, but there's also another one called screen percentage. So screen percentage is basically like, you're going to render it at a larger size and then it will scale it down to 128720. Now, generally that's not a good idea with a ray tracer, but with something like Unreal, when the renders are pretty fast, that's not a bad idea at all. So what you want to do is, uh, I'll delete this. You, you can see the ones that I've typed. I'll just delete this and I'll do it again. So just click here and take console variables, click on plus, and then it's called screen percentage. So what you can do is, if you come into the, if you come here to console commands, type in r dot screen percentage and you'll find it. 
So just select this, do control C, come in here, control V, and then this should be 150. So this will render it at 150% and then scale it back down. Okay. Then the next one we want is the depth of field quality. So I can probably just pick this up from here. Like you get a list of all of them. So I can just take R dot depth of field quality and I'll drop that in. This will be, they say keep it at four. So we'll keep it at four. And then in order to improve the depth of field quality, you get something called as the temporal upscale and you want to keep that to zero. Okay, so what you want to do is type in R dot T E M P O R A L and you'll get something called temporal upsampling. Okay, so take that, do control C, paste it here and this will be at zero. So those are the three that I kind of used and they worked, you know, just fine. So yeah, so the color output is important and then, you know, all of this is perfectly fine. And then if you want, we can save this as a preset. Okay, so I can just, you know, come in here and save as preset. So that will be fine. I don't need it. I don't need to save this right now. So I'm perfectly happy with this. I'll just, what I'll do is I'll come into the output. I'll just change the name. So I'll call this as class animation and uh, let's hit accept and we can render this. So I'll just do render local. Let me, let me just, let me save this. I'll hit render local and I'll come back once it's done. Yeah, so it's rendering, it doesn't look uh, anything like the viewport because this is, you're seeing the sRGB version of the ACES space. So it's going to look like crap. But once we bring it into After Effects and set up the color space over there, it'll look just fine. So this is, you know, the render, what the render will be. And I'll come back once it's done. All right, so the render is done. Uh, let's create a new project in After Effects and we will import our footage. Okay, so I'll just double click and I have my footage here called class animation and make sure uh, you have the open EXR sequence and you can create a composition. Okay, and we can just do okay and it'll create a composition for me and import the whole thing. Okay, so we have our footage. Now, this looks fine because I think it's setting up the ACES on its own, but I'll just show you what needs to be done. So come into file and go to project settings and come to color and the default is the color engine is kept to adobe color managed which will make it look like this so you can see like this is how it was rendered like it looked pretty crap looked pretty crappy back then now what you can do is come into the project settings set this up to ocio now it has inbuilt options which you can straight up use so that is also fine so it can set it to aces 1.2 and we will set this to ACES CG, which is what we were using. Okay. Or you can sort of like do it here, ACES CG. And then the color space should be ACES sRGB. And if I do OK, and there you go, it matches the whole thing. So if I look at my footage and we look at it from the camera point of view, see, there you go. Okay, like if I make it small, see, so this matches, you know, Perfectly. It's actually got motion blur in this. It's not showing it there, but you know, we have our whole scene sort of like the color is matching now. Okay. Okay. So this is fine. Like, let's just play this back and see if it's looking okay. Yeah. There's like zero flicker. Everything is perfectly stable. You know, everything looks nice. So if you want like detailed information about this, uh, this is the channel where you want to go. This is William uh for sure okay like go to his uh youtube account and he has like tons of information about unreal he's very very good at it this that this is the channel where i got most of my information from and uh, he has videos on how to set up lumen and how to set up the movie render queue and how to improve quality and all of it so this is like if you want to learn unreal he's the guy to go to okay Okay, so once you've done this, now the question that comes up is we just want to, we just want to render this out. Now the problem is that if you try to render it, it's going to look crappy. Okay, it's going to go back looking like standard linear sRGB. Like if I just come in here, let me just save this file. I'll do save as, uh, I'll call it classroom one. Okay, and if I do uh, add to render queue, and I'll set this up. I'll call this 
classroom and if we hit render like it looks fine here yeah but wait till we open it up so if i open this up it looks like that okay so what you're seeing here is just for the viewport okay so what you need to do is right click and add an adjustment layer and you need to take this color data and bring it back to linear srgb so what you do is come into effects and control come to color correction and you'll find something called as uh, ocio color space transform and what we want is we just want to go from uh, input is sscg and the output is linear srgb okay so we can just do color picking output srgb now it'll look like crap here but now if you render it it will be fine okay so if i do add to render queue and i'll save it again to classroom and hit render and if we play this now see it looks perfect so what you can do is once you've done all your effects work and everything has been done, just add like one adjustment layer on top and take your ACES space and bring it back to sRGB and then it will be fine. Okay. If you want to import your own configuration, uh, which is not important, it has an inbuilt one, but you can just click here, go to custom and you can select the ACES space that you had. Yeah, so the same way we had picked up the config, we can pick up this config. Okay, like that, it'll give you more or less the same options. So you can either use this, which is inbuilt, or you can use that. So yeah, so just remember to add like a color space transform back to sRGB and it'll be fine. So yeah, so this is the, the whole process of how to set up your lighting in Unreal and how to set up the movie render queue and ACES and then do a final render out of After Effects. Okay, uh, as I said, like uh, in this video, he has another video on how to set up ACES. In that one, he shows how to use it for DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so if you're someone who uses DaVinci Resolve, you can see that video that will be, you know, more, that will be more appropriate for you. Okay, that's pretty much it. So I, I am working on another Unreal series, like a slightly bigger video, which will have like a whole bunch of Houdini stuff as well. I'll start doing that from next week.